Okay, I started very early on this special day and um, I'm at my house in London. I bought a house about six months ago and I gutted the whole place. And so what I'm doing at the moment is that I've just come to see what the builders have been up to because um, I haven't had a chance to, to come around here for a few days. Um, when I bought this house, the idea was to gut the whole thing. So I'm going to put a loft extension in and I'm also um, doing a side return. Now, um, I made the big mistake that most people make when they... Um, buy a house is that they promise themselves that they're going to be in before Christmas and yes you've guessed it there seems to be a lot of work that needs to be done and I can't see this place being ready at all by um, Christmas because it's about four weeks away um, you know where there's got to be plastered to be plastered um, well let's have a look in this room here this is um, Oh yeah, this is going to be this is going to be a bathroom, so that still needs to be plastered. Um, let me go up to the loft because that's the area that I'm really interested to see how that's progressing. Um, all right, the stairs are not in yet, so um, all right. Oh. Right, let me try and get up these ladders without um, people hold the camera at the same time. I don't want to break my neck. That would be something to see on film, wouldn't it? Uh, right, so... Oh! This is not too bad. This is not too bad at all. So, I could see some progress in here. Have a look. This is... It's all plasterboarded. This light round. It's all plasterboarded. Oh yes, and the the electric cables. So that's not too bad. And um, over there should be a bathroom. Let me try and get some light in there for you. Yeah, that just needs um, a bit of um, plaster on that. I can't see any plumbing though. Um, that is obviously the next stage that they've got to... Oh, I've got to show you this. This is... Um, all builders need to have this. And it's nice to see that these guys are no different to everyone else. I'll stick some light on it so I could just show you. Because I just think it's like builder's medicine. If I turn around, have a look down there and get a bit closer in. Look, the cleanest area where they make their cup of tea. So you've got the old kettle, oh, still full of water, and they've got their milk, and oh, lots of sugar. They love their sugar, and this is their special drug. Look at that, tea bags. Now, I hope they don't spend too much of their time drinking tea. Okay, I'm on my way down to Devon. Um, as you can see outside, um, it's still quite dark. It's, it's still early in the morning. I like to try and leave as early as possible uh, to try and avoid most of the traffic. And uh, it's about a four hour four and a half hour drive down to Devon and I'm really looking forward to to go to be on the farm because it's been some time since I've been there because I've just been so busy doing other things so um, I'll talk to you a bit later right here we are so come and say hello to to, to my pigs and they're really excited, aren't you? You're excited. Here what? Come on. Normally, I just put it on the floor, but I just wanted you to see. Come on, girls. Come on. That's it. There they are. You see? They're getting really stuck into those apples. There they are. 
that is a real crunch of satisfaction. There you are, girls. That's it. I'll get my feet up there. Now those are two very, very, very happy pigs. Um, next thing I'm going to do is um, change their water because um, that water hasn't been changed for a few days. But um, I just think it's so satisfying just watching them really tuck into their breakfast. Just look at them. Now, the thing about keeping pigs is that they do make a mess of everything. Look what they've just done to this field. All of that has been rooted up by them. So, that's one of the prices you have to pay, um, keeping pigs. Um, now, this is, their little, this is their little home. See? That's where they go and shelter from the shelter from the cold. Okay, I'm going to try and give them some water now. And this is going to be quite interesting trying to hold this camera and um, do this at the same time. So forgive me if it's all quite wobbly. Okay. So I think. Uh, I don't know whether this is going to work or not, but um, I'll try it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put this camera on this post and see what happens. Okay. Right. Um, so it's pretty easy when you've got two hands. Right, let's try and um, <laughs> give them some water. This is one of my favourite spots on the farm. It is just a wonderful position. You've got views all around. And this is where I come to contemplate and thank God for my blessings. So I'm just going to pan round at the moment and for you to get a chance to see how absolutely beautiful it is. about 12 um, um, cows in this field and normally they wouldn't be out here at this time of the year because it's usually very very wet and they would poach the fields but because the weather's been really really good in the last month or so they've been allowed to stay out much longer than they normally would. Now um, it's started to rain quite heavily and the weather is starting to turn so I would think that in the next couple of weeks they were going um, inside and then they will spend the winter inside and they'll come back, back here again um, around March, April. Um, but it's a glorious day so um, they're really enjoying the sunshine. They're standing around me at the moment because they think I've got some nuts to, to give them. Um, they're behaving themselves which um, makes a change. So um, I've got one here who's licking my um, shoulder. Go on. Do you want to see that? Look at that big tongue. You want to lick the camera there, that's it. There you are. They're very, very curious animals. And um, there's something about my jacket that um, this one particularly likes at the moment. There seems to be a lot of mushrooms around this season. Look at these here. I've just noticed these. Look at these. I wouldn't ever eat them because I don't know whether they're, they're edible or not. But they do look absolutely beautiful. Look at these over here. Uh, 
Yeah, you've really got to know what you're doing when it comes to um, mushrooms. But they do look really attractive, I must say. Now here, we've got the last of the carrots. Have a look at this. Lovely carrots being pulled out. Could you see? That's a lovely, lovely carrot. Is that... Um, right, we're now in Launceston, and uh, Launceston is the first town in Cornwall that you come to if you're approaching um, on the A30. It's right on the hill, and um, I'll take you and, and, and show you um, around. Ahead of us is my favourite church. I'll take you in and um, show you around in a moment. And one of the interesting things about Launceston, if you look around, you can see it's almost empty. We're talking about it's midday on, on um Saturday and anywhere else you'd find there'd be it would be teeming of people, not here. In fact, you'll find that it starts to close down in Launceston and around midday, which is one of the big shocks I had when I first came here, I must say. Now I've been in Launceston some twenty years and I've never ever heard the sound that is ahead of me. I mean, there's me telling you earlier on about what a quiet place it is. And it sounds as though there's a rock band in the middle of the square. Let's go and find out what's happening. something else. You never ever think that you'd find a rock band in the middle of Launceston. This is just something else. And extraordinary. 